If you're a database developer, you're already familiar with ODBC and JDBC. Maybe you have used them as well, but why were they created? What is the problem that it solves? If you want to understand the big picture, then watch this video till the end. Hi, I'm Bindu Kumar and I welcome you to my channel. In this video, I will introduce you to the concept of an ODBC and a JDBC without getting into the technical details. Whether you're a technical or a non-technical person, whether you have worked on a database or not, you will still be able to understand the concept behind an ODBC and a JDBC drivers. So the very first thing that I want to clarify is what does this abbreviation stand for? ODBC stands for Open Database Connectivity and JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. They both work in a similar fashion is just that they are meant for different platforms but we will come to that later when you're talking about databases it's very important to distinguish between database servers and database clients in this picture you will see postgresql database on the right side so that represents the database server and on the left side we have pg admin which is a client application so the client is the one that's responsible for connecting to the database it acts as an interface through which you connect to the database and submit queries whereas the server on the right side is the one that accepts these inputs and then it processes those queries and returns the data so let's always differentiate between the client and the server now let's consider the different database clients that are capable of connecting to postgresql here i have a small list of database clients which you can see on the left side we have pg admin db word toad tableau and power bi all of these are client applications that are capable of connecting to the postgresql database but one of these clients is unlike the other do you know which one if you guessed pg admin you are right so what makes pg admin different from these other clients you see pg admin is a database client that is developed by the same community that develops the postgresql database as well how pg admin is different from these other clients is that pg admin uses a library called libpq to connect to the postgresql you can think of libpq as a native language that postgresql database understands very well and when you connect to postgresql using libpq you get the best performance and the best compatibility with the postgresql database that you're connecting to whereas the other database clients here like the db virto tableau and power bi they don't use libpq they use something called as a jdbc driver that's released from postgresql so what is the difference between libpq and this jdbc this is what we need to understand to understand the difference between libpq and jdbc we need to take an analogy from the real world and for this we are not going to talk about databases instead we are going to talk about languages that people speak around the world let's consider a group of people in which every person in the group speaks a different language so here you have these different icons representing the different people along with the different language that they speak and let's assume for a moment that this is the only language that they can speak in case you're not familiar with some of these languages these are languages that are primarily spoken in the southern part of india so what we have now is we have six people who all speak different languages and who have difficulty communicating with each other now let's imagine the kannada speaking person has a need to communicate to every other individual so in order for this person to speak to the other person he has to learn the other person's language in this case it's tamil and the same applies every time this person needs to communicate to the other individuals he has to add all these different languages as a skill but expecting one person to add multiple languages as a skill sounds quite unfair so what could be a possible solution for this the solution could be imagine all of these individuals have one more additional skill that is common between all of them and in this example it could be english now let's take the same scenario where all of these six members in the group apart from their primary language or you know let's say their native tongue they can speak english as well well so this makes communication very very easy between every member within the group now one person can speak to the other using english as a common language between them where this also helps us imagine introducing another member into this group somebody who speaks french but if this person also knows english even a little bit then it makes it easy for the existing team members to communicate 
to this new team member. By now you might be wondering what has language got to do with the databases? Well, you see the problem that the JDBC or ODBC solves is very similar to this. Sometimes in order to better understand a solution, you have to imagine a word where it does not exist. Now let's imagine that word where JDBC or ODBC does not exist. Here we have the database servers on the right side and we have the database clients on the left side. Similar to how one person has to learn new language in order to speak to another person. Awesome. Here, Tableau, in order to connect to MySQL, would have to understand the MySQL dialect or MySQL language. Similarly, in order to connect to the Oracle database, Tableau has to know the Oracle language and so on and so forth. So every time Tableau has to connect to a new database, Tableau needs to have that skill or the driver for that specific database. Now, imagine Tableau was created sometime in 2010, which means the creators of Tableau had information about all the databases that were created until 2010. But what about databases that are created after 2010? How will we make sure that Tableau can connect to any relational database that's created in the future as well? Well, you see, that is where we have a problem. Imagine there is a new database that is created sometime in the future. Let's call it double XDB. Tableau will not be able to immediately connect to this. What Tableau will have to do is they will have to build a special interface that talks to this database using the new databases language or library. Now, this applies for any database client like Power BI, DBWare, Tableau and many other clients that are there. Now let's consider a scenario where we have ODBC and JDBC. Here again, we have database clients and database servers, but in between we have introduced this ODBC and JDBC as well. Think of ODBC and JDBC as translators or a common medium between the clients and the servers. What every database vendor is going to do is when they release a database, a new database or a new version, they're also going to release an ODBC and a JDBC driver that is is compatible for that specific version. So here you can see MySQL releases an ODBC and JDBC driver. Similarly, Oracle publishes their own drivers as well and so on and so forth with every different database. So likewise, any database that's created in the future, as long as they are compliant with the standards of the database world, they are expected to publish their own JDBC and ODBC driver so that the entire world have access to these drivers. Now let's come to the clients on the left side. The clients no longer have to discover each and every database separately. They just have to build an interface that is compatible with the generic standard of ODBC and JDBC drivers. This means ODBC and JDBC is nothing but a common standard, a common protocol that everyone agrees to. So if I'm designing a database and I want to make sure that all the existing database clients as well as any new database clients in the future can use my database I will make sure I release a JDBC and ODBC driver to the entire world. Hence, ODBC and JDBC is nothing but a common standard. Similar to how English was a common medium of communication, ODBC and JDBC define a common standard with which clients and servers can communicate with each other. So by now we understand that JDBC and ODBC ensure a common standard and a high compatibility between different database clients and different different database servers. But is there anything else beyond this? Well, there's just one more thing that I want to highlight. And for this, I would like to go back to the example of the languages. Here, let's consider two people. One, a Kannada speaking person and another, a Malayalam speaking person. Both of them have English as a common language. Although they can communicate using English as a medium, there are certain scenarios where talking in their mother tongue or talking in their primary language makes more sense. Now, what could that scenario be? Imagine a communication that involves a lot of conflict resolution or a very deeply social interaction like between couples. It is a well-known fact that in such deeply social conversations, making the communication in one's own mother tongue has a lot more impact and a lot more influence. Now, that same analogy can be extended to the database as well. You see, on the right side, we have the PostgreSQL database and on the left side, we have Tableau. Tableau can communicate to the Postgres using the JDBC or the ODBC driver. However, if Tableau uses the native driver of PostgreSQL, which is the libpq, the performance is even better. 
Tableau can then use some features that are very specific to Postgres and hence achieve better performance. So with this, we have come to the end of this video. Let's quickly summarize what we have learned in this video. So the first thing is the ODBC and JDBC is a generic contract or a protocol between a database client and a database server. This ensures a high degree of compatibility between clients and servers, even if they were created at different times. So this means clients that are created in the future can talk to databases that existed in the past or databases that are yet to be created can talk to clients that exist today. So in a way, ODBC and JDBC act as a translator between the client and the server, ensuring that the communication is not dependent on something that is very, very specific to a certain databases protocol or library. But since this is a translator, there is often a slight performance overhead, which means there is a bit of latency between the ODBC JDBC receiving the commands from the client and then sending it to the server. But often this overhead is very insignificant that it does not actually impact the application performance. But this is something that you should be aware of as a database developer. And finally, the question that most of you have, what is the difference between ODBC and JDBC? You see, ODBC was primarily created for a Windows environment or rather applications that were built in C and C++. Whereas the Java community came up with their own implementation, which they called as JDBC. And, you know, back then there was a bit of isolation and competition between Java applications and C++ or .NET based applications. Hence, two separate protocols for ODBC and JDBC. And finally, the trend is that database clients like Tableau or Power BI, they are capable of connecting to databases in both ways, which is either using the JDBC and ODBC driver, or in many cases, using the native driver of the database. Using the native driver of the database unlocks all the features of the database while giving better performance, while using the JDBC, ODBC, ensures a better degree of portability in case you were to replace either the client or the database in the future. As a database developer, definitely you must know what are JDBC and ODBC drivers and how to use them across multiple clients. So here are some links. You will find these links in the video description as well. Make sure you spend some time, go through the documentation and understand how are the drivers made available from the different vendors. This will definitely be helpful for you. Thank you for sticking till the end of this video. If you found this content useful, please remember to like this video share this video with your friends and colleagues and do subscribe to my channel i'll catch you in my next video thank you